Now do I have your attention. Are you sure? I want everybody to stop what they're doing and take a moment and soak up this image. Get a good eyeful because what you're looking at is the one person who could have saved Donald Trump last night. The one person, had they been consulted, had they been allowed to participate in Donald Trump's debate prep, could have changed everything last night. It would have resulted in an absolutely crushing defeat of Kamala Harris and the agenda of the left. Now, a lot of people think that I'm on their side. I'm not. I'm just a student of history, and I can see what's happening from a dispassionate point of view. Riley Gaines, I can attest to the tears that I witnessed from finishers who missed being named an All-American by one place, that place being taken, of course, by a biological male. I can attest to the extreme discomfort in the locker room from 18-year-old girls exposed to male body parts and having to undress with a male watching them in the same room. 12 times NCAA All-American, 5 times SEC champion, Riley Gaines. Had Donald Trump not been such a self-aggrandizing narcissist, he would have thought, hmm, what topic could I bring up that the women in America would really pay attention to that would end Kamala Harris's chance at winning any office in the future, much less that of the presidency. If there were any topic that could have been brought up that was completely ignored, and believe me, Donald Trump had plenty of chances to bring up things. He brought up the issue in Springfield, Ohio, with apparently their pets disappearing for some reason, and he brought up all sorts of old nonsense and his legal problems over and over and over again and all this stuff, but he could have brought that up. He could have brought that. He even had the final statement. He won the coin toss and had the final statement. If he would have done two minutes, two minutes on this, that would have been the end of the debate. But what do we know? What do we know when we see people who are led about by their emotions? They stop thinking. And I don't care who you are. He let Kamala Harris get under his skin last night. He was angry. He was loud. He was defensive. And he didn't have to be. That was the sad part. That was the sad part. There were so many things he could have brought up, that this being the primary one. This being the primary one, but there were so many others he could have brought up, but all of those other topics didn't have anything to do with him personally and his presidency and his legal problems and poor little him. And he fell right into her trap. This has been my entire issue. Look, I said it before, I'll say it again. I'm not a fan of either one of them for a lot of different reasons, but believe me, People have been deluding themselves, people on the right, about what will happen if Donald Trump gets elected. Nothing. Nothing will happen, and now the chances of that are exceedingly small. Battlefield of the mind. Now, if you'd like to get read in on battlefield of the mind topics, how to see through all of the nonsense that the media puts out, show me how many people are talking about this today. Seriously. I want you to go show me how many people are saying, you know what, if Donald Trump had brought up what Riley Gaines said and the whole issue with the trans nonsense and the Bud Light stuff and all that stuff, he would have done far better. He could have put her on the defensive. But did he? No. Of course he didn't. But Florida Monkey, real quick, if you'd like to join us, Florida Monkey Patreon channel, one U.S. dollar. That's it. One U.S. dollar per month, even less if you sign up for an entire year, fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. I know what you're going to say. But Florida Monkey, Florida Monkey, it wasn't fair. It was three against one. It was three against one. And the moderators were unfair. And they did. Florida Monkey, wait, wait, what, what, what? It was unfair? I mean, like, guns and rifles versus bows and arrows? 
was unfair. Now, wait a minute, Malky. That's an entirely different... How is it entirely different? How many times have you heard people on the right say, we're at war, we're at war, we're at war, we're at war with the left, we're at war with the Marxists? Okay, all's fair in love and war. All's fair in love and war. Was it fair of the people who were driving the Native Americans into the sea and exterminating them and committing the greatest genocide the planet has ever seen? Was it fair for them to use Winchester repeaters against bows and arrows? Was that fair? Was it fair for people who had lived on the land for, oh, I don't know how many centuries, perhaps millennia, to then all of a sudden be forced to just walk away because of unfair weaponry? We still have signs up commemorating the genocide in America. That's right, and that's what it was. By the clinical, factual definition of genocide, what we did to settle this country was genocide. And then we have the audacity to call the descendants of those people trying to live on a certain part of it across some line on some map, call them illegal. It's hilarious. But what does the Bible say about he that leadeth into captivity? What does the Bible say about he that leadeth into captivity? Or, or more importantly, what does the Bible say about he that exalteth himself? And don't sit there and tell me that Donald Trump is not the master of self-exaltation. Literally everything he's ever tried has had to have his name on it. No matter how many failed attempts at business, no matter how many um, lawsuits, it was always his name and then whatever it was. So let's just be real. How many of you are ready to go back to where we were before the Trump delusion? How many of you are ready to go back to where we were before the Trump delusion, where everybody understood that Washington, D.C. was the enemy, that billionaires and the, I guess, what do you call them? I guess you could call them the Illuminati, the, the enlightened, the uber wealthy, the billionaires of the world, that they were not our friends no matter what they said. You see, sometimes first impressions can be deceiving. A lot of people look at this image and they're like, wow, that is a really cool image. Man, I couldn't, oh, that would be great. If we could find some like-minded folks and find a deep forest like this with all this running water and somehow make some, some shelters and then just let the, the forest grow over them. And man, that would be so great. This would be an awful place to live. This would be an awful place to live. Anybody who's ever served in the jungle would know why this would be an awful place to live. Because on the hot days, it would be unbearably humid. On the cold days, it would be unbearably damp and dank. You would have a continual fight with bugs and with mold. Everything would be slippery all the time. Imagine walking down this little step down here. You'd fall and break your neck every other time. Hardly no way in, no way out. It'd be a horrible existence. Everybody would be sick all of the time just because of all of the dampness and the bugs and the mold. and the. You see, you look at it on the surface and you think, wow, it's great. But then in reality, what do we know? What do we know? See, this is the world we're living in right now. And I don't mind sharing the picture. We're living in a capitalist world where money buys everything, including political candidates. Here's the Harris Victory Fund. See, it's just absolutely, well, you know, you have somebody like Taylor Swift coming out to her 200 and quarter million almost supporters online. Um, I'm sorry, quarter billion pardon me, her quarter of a billion supporters online saying she's endorsing Harris like she wasn't going to before. I put together this collage and I thought, you know what, if I led with it, it's a little bit too busy. 
But basically, it's the idea of perceptions being reality. A lot of people don't agree with that statement, but how people perceive you is how they see you, regardless of whether you believe it to be the reality or not. And right now, Kamala Harris, the perception of, is some cross between Lady Liberty and Captainette America. And Donald Trump is seen as an angry, old man who has a criminal history and is a misogynist and is a racist. And that's just how he's coming off right now. But the four quotes in the middle, John Cleese, there are people sitting there who are deliberately waiting for the thrill of being offended. They want to be offended because it gives them a sense of moral superiority. What's Trump supporters in a nutshell? He has a lot more financial activity and support when his supporters are being offended by the left. How do we know this? Well, remember the video after he won the election? This was 2018. Patriot Nurse came out and said, why have people stopped prepping? Well, it's real simple. People began worshiping the government again. Because Donald Trump was in charge. People stopped buying prepper goods. They thought, you know... A new dawn had risen on America. The one to the right here is pretty self-explanatory. I miss the old days when logic and facts were more important than feelings and delusions. Um, I hate to say this, but there were no such thing as the old days when logic and facts were more important than feelings and delusions. Feelings and delusions have always outranked logic and facts. Maybe not so much in politics as they do today, but in reality that's the case. Because what do we know? People will always remember how you feel regardless. Pardon me. People will always remember how you made them feel, regardless of what you might have said. Morgan Freeman, if you're depressed, you're living in the past. We can't go back to the days of Obama. We can't go back. But Marx, if we elect Kamala Harris, it's going to be the end of this country. It's going to be just like it was with Obama. Eight years of that. If you're depressed, you're living in the past. If you're anxious, you're living in the future. But if you're at peace, you're accepting reality and what is and living in the present. Face the reality. And then Sigmund Freud. Most people do not really want freedom because freedom involves responsibility. And most people are frightened of responsibility Hence their desire to, to create a cult around Donald Trump. Everything bad that happens is the lack of Trump's ability to have power to fix it. And every good thing that happens is, well, all of Donald Trump's um, fault. Because, you know, when Donald Trump's in charge, he does nothing but all good things. It's just that simple. People stopped prepping. Lisa Haven... Justice Knight, they had to read the writing on the wall about what was going on with censorship, and they had to, I'm sorry, capitalism confirmed. They had to go to different techniques. And there's a really great video out there. Um, it's from, and it's a short, it's a YouTube short, um, at T-E-E underscore T-O-W, all small, T-T-O, T-T-O. It's a scene from a movie, I can't show any of it because, of course, of the copyright um, but it's about a guy from the railroad trying to offer money to a Native American and the Native American saying, look, I'd rather have my land than your money. And he's trying to convince him, you know, why, you know, the U.S. government can't be dealt with. We're going to take it one way or the other. So that's still where we're at. So once again, I'll reiterate, of course, because she's a Floridian, nobody listened. Florida woman, Florida man, what the hell do we know, right? What do we know? The one topic, the one singular topic that Trump could have got on and stayed on and hammered on that would have been a winner. And believe me, he had opportunities. He went on and on about all sorts of garbage and nonsense and things from the past and make-believe stuff, 
when if he would have just stopped and taken a breath and thought, what was the big thing? What was the real turning point in the Biden administration that really sent their Biden-Harris numbers into the basement? It was this. It was the whole issue with biological men pretending the Bud Light thing, the woke nonsense, all this garbage, the, the trans agenda, the LGBT whatever alphabet agenda. That's all it would have taken. It's all he would have had to say, hey, you know what? Maybe, maybe a lot of what Kamala Harris says about me might be true. You know, I come from a different era. I'm an older guy, I admit it. And, you know, sometimes I have some pretty um, strong opinions and I'm stubborn. And, you know, I like to have things my way. But if you want full-grown, biologically complete males just sauntering right in to your daughter's dressing room and getting undressed in front of her and them being forced to undress in front of him, by all means, by all means, elect my opponent, elect Kamala Harris, by all means, if that's what you want the future to be, because that's what it will be. Nobody will stand in the way of that in a Harris Waltz administration. If you'd like somebody to stand in the way of the guy trying to walk into your daughter's locker room and get undressed and expose himself to your daughter, then vote for me. I think that that's all he would have had to say. It would have been the one soundbite that would have been probably been replayed over and over and over and over and over again. And believe me, I don't care how good she is at forcing a smile. She would have felt incredibly uncomfortable at that and would have had no answer for it. Would have had absolutely no answer. Forget the economy. Forget immigration. Forget all this nonsense. You see, nobody outside of Pennsylvania gives a damn about fracking in Pennsylvania. Nobody outside of Pennsylvania gives a damn about fracking in Pennsylvania. Want to frack? Great. Don't want to frack? That's great too. Whatever. Who cares? Who cares? But the rest of the country does give a damn about that issue. But why didn't Trump bring it up? Why didn't Trump bring it up? It was literally everything people were talking about for how long were people talking about this that men are men and women are women and men don't belong in women's sports men don't belong in women's locker rooms i don't care how psychologically screwed up they are about what they want to wear or what they want to do in life it's just it would have been so easy and i guess that's all i can say if you didn't think about it, you might ask yourself a question. Go look in the mirror. God, why didn't I think about that? Why are none of the right-wing talking heads that I worship talking about that? Why are none of the right-wing talking heads that I bow down and worship every day, why are they not talking about that? Maybe they're not thinking either. Maybe they're not using their brains either. If you'd like to learn how to use your brain again, join us. Florida Maki Patreon channel. One U.S. dollar per month. Even less if you sign up for an entire year and fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. God bless. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Pray for Jennifer Hammonds. She's in Louisiana. Hurricane Francine is making landfall there. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe. See you guys next time.